due to a request in this demo, I'm going to um, demonstrate the simulation of the Chainlink site reliability node and on a local um, node or laptop or computer, whatever you want to call it. This is an advanced demonstration with uh, following uh, prerequisites. So it's uh, basically assume that you have understanding of Chainlink Oracle functionality and Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, Docker functionality, Vagrant virtual box functionality, and general operating system, um, Unix derivatives such as Linux, uh, CentOS, which we're going to use in this particular purpose, could be Ubuntu as well, um, and understanding of network layers, TCP IP, and its implementation in uh, Docker, and uh, relational databases, which um, we are going to use Postgres in this particular case. Here you can see uh, that we are uh, running the virtual box and I forgot the image of the Vagrant CentOS 7. Uh, so uh, basically we are going to use Vagrant for the whole functionality. So here we have a terminal. I open another one. We go to the Vagrant directory, so you can see the Vagrant file here. And uh, we have multiple machines, uh, we're using CentOS for this particular purpose. So um, you can see that um, we are using a 30 gigabyte disk size, which I think uh, originally comes with 40 gig, so this is going to be overruled. So I'm uh, starting the uh, CentOS 7 operating system in the virtual box. We're going to use the number one EN0 Wi-Fi airport for communication. So then uh, it will have connection to outside world and we connect it from outside to inside world as well, which means from the OS 10, uh, OS X, as well uh, within the um, Vagrant. So the SSH has been established. Okay, now we can simply SSH into our CentOS 7 machine running. Okay, we are in now. And if I do ls slash home, you can see I have uh, Avalanche, Cardano, Chainlink, and Vagrant users. And these are um, all the different uh, projects that we're running uh, as um, validator. And the Chainlink is what we are run, focusing today. So to separate the environments, I separated them by a user under CentOS 7. So we do s sudo su minus l Chainlink. Okay, now we are in the Chainlink environment. And uh, I've already scripted the necessary um, uh, uh, commands, uh, so we don't have to wait for that. What we do here now, we can see um, where the Docker is running. Docker has already been installed. So we can see there is a Docker is running, but there is no containers. So the first uh, container that we're going to run is the Geth, uh, Go Ethereum. So here's a command that we're running on 8.5.4.6 and the WebSocket uh, address 0.0.0. For the chain link, we have to create a chain link subdirectory in a hidden directory. Then we need the environment file. So in the environment file, we have uh, root at the uh, home directory chain link. F chain ID is one as it's supposed to be because we're going to go live. 
So, so we have the TLS port and um, gas up data through and we need the, the FURLWS, the uh, web sockets, which in this particular case is at 172.17.02.856. And I'll show you how we find that out. So here we start the um, Go Ethereum, which we had uh, the commands up here. This will take uh, two hours to one or two days to actually um, finish. So on the other side, I just go through the other process. So basically I go to the background again. So now we do background SSH, CentOS, the connect to the machine, virtual machine uh, CentOS. Okay, and um, So now we can say uh, docker ps, you can see that uh, the Ethereum client is running. We're not going to run a full node because uh, we are not doing any mining here. So I'm using the geth uh, client. Now you can see uh, that we're going to run uh, the Postgres. And uh, we are going to run it on 5432, which Chainlink needs uh, the Postgres uh, relational database uh, for its database. And if it was an external um, database, or oh, Postgres was uh, installed on an external source, then we would need this uh, Postgres variables. But for, because we are all on Chainlink internally, we're connecting, we will not need this particular variables. So we simply run the Postgres uh, container. Okay, that was fast. So now we do Docker PS. So you can see that the Ethereum and uh, the Postgres are both seem to be running now. Internally on 5.4.3.2 and 8.5.4.6. Now since uh, we've um, done the configuration on the chain link as well, which I showed you a moment ago. We can start um, uh, the chain link as well. So it does a database build and uh, eventually to connect uh, via um, the Ethereum blockchain from the clients that we just created. So I clear the um, screen here again. So first of all, um, in order to make sure you can uh, try to connect to the PS, uh, Postgres SQL and uh, this is the command. So Okay, it's working. So we quit out of it. Now we can run the chain link. So this is the command. I'm just uh, running the shell. So as you can see, it's constructing the database that is needed. It's I mean, successfully connected to the Postgres database. Now we give it a password. So on the left hand side, you can see that uh, the Ethereum blockchain is getting updated. Since that will take a very long time, um, I will basically, uh, as soon as we have a successful connection to the Ethereum, I will stop uh, this video and uh, then uh, after the connection, I will create another video um, to be able to actually access in, uh, the chain link through the ports, because until that is not finished, we cannot do that. But we still can demonstrate that uh, the chain link is uh, running successfully.
the insert into migration seems to be taking very long as well so eventually I will fast forward this part of the video You can implement this exactly the same uh, way on the AWS, but uh, Ubuntu is the cheapest um, image that you can use. It actually affects the EC2 price if you use Ubuntu. And because everything is done on Docker, so it will not make that much of a difference when you're on AWS. So I wouldn't be doing an AWS version of this uh, because it will be almost exactly identical if you know already how to uh, create a VPC and the network. Uh, construction and the infrastructure in the AWS. Okay, now uh, you can see that we have uh, successfully run uh, the chain link. Now it is trying to connect to the Ethereum client. And uh, as you can see, we have a warning fail to connect to Ethereum node WS. So I'm just going to stop it for now. Okay, now this warning that uh, you can see here it says uh, fail Ethereum chain ID doesn't uh, match because uh, the ID hasn't become one yet because uh, we haven't finished the process on the Ethereum client. And as soon as that finishes, then uh, we can basically try to reconnect the same way. Now, since we have already created a, um, a container, and uh, so if I run that chain link run shell it will say that um, that, uh, that there is a conflict so basically if you say docker start and we call it a chain link so we can see that uh, docker ps minus a <coughs> and uh, Given it a um, chain link name, so we say docker start chain link. And that would uh, basically restart the chain link node. I hope this was useful and uh, thank you for your attention.